So I want to talk a little bit about um, brick and mortar locations versus events. Um, I've actually never gone to an event, but we have an event that we do um, in our city and the event's kind of right where we're at and, and it's done very well. But so there's a few like um, things you want to look at, I guess. Your price points at a brick and mortar location is going to be different than an event because you can get more money out of an event uh, a brick and mortar locate or a, a location that's permanent um, you you probably have to have a little bit better price to get people to drive your traffic if that makes sense um, so price points one of the things also um, your size your sizes and flavor options so I I read a um, on like shave ice forum or a Facebook group about a guy that just goes to state fairs and he so he does one size he only has one size and then he has a flavor station so um, all he does is a shave in one size all day long and hands it to the customer and charges them so he can be making he can be doing it really fast and the Flavor station, he doesn't have to deal with them deciding what their flavors are because that takes a lot of time. Um, people deciding what they want on their shave ice. So that, and and he get, does $20,000 a day at state fairs is what he said, which is insane. And that's, that's why events, you can make a ton of money if you can simplify your process and make it fast. So if you, if you do, um, you, you're going to want to do one size if you're doing an event. Something where you can just keep making that one non-stop and serving them when your line's huge. Um, so the size... So if you're a brick and mortar store, it's good to have more options, probably more flavors. Because you have to draw people into where you're at. Whereas an event, the people are already there. Um... Flavor station, I think, is huge, but you probably don't want that at a permanent location because it'd probably attract bees and it'd be a little more hassle to deal with than just where you're not doing the volume that you do um, at an event where there's just thousands of people. And then another point, like brick, brick and mortar versus event that I want to make is that the brick and mortar is a little bit easier. Like I've got it set up here to where um, my employees can just come in and it's all here, you know, it's all ready to go. They know the routine, they know what needs to be done. And so I don't really have to do much besides making sure the supplies are there and the quality control and stuff like that. So it's a lot easier to automate a brick and mortar. Whereas an event, you have to go and physically set up every time or you know, make sure you have all the supplies for that event. This I just have to keep. It's it's a lot easier to maintain because I can buy all my stuff at once, and and it's you know I don't I could probably leave it alone for a month and they'd be the the my employees would be fine. So it's a little bit easier to automate a brick and mortar, and but events are a lot more money, and at once, so. I wouldn't say this is brick and mortar or a permanent location versus an event. I would say do both, you know, like get a permanent location set up and then also do events. That's where you're probably going to make the most money and you're already doing the business so you can keep doing it. But that's that's kind of the, the takeaways that I have. Also, for uh, an event, you can do uh, higher prices on that one on that one size because when people are out at a, at a festival and or fourth of july they'll pay whatever it doesn't really matter um but, so those are a few things if you have any questions or comments or any videos you need me to make or want me to make or information that i'm based on the experiences i've had i i don't know everything but i've i've done this now i think this is my fifth year so let me know if you have any questions